anybody with a mental illness who happens to be wheelchair bound, and it's not just wheelchair bound, you have to have no medical problems. If you have medical problems, you're in the medical side. Lieutenant Dan wouldn't have been. Uh... Lieutenant Dan would never have been admitted into a psychiatric hospital because he has the misfortune of being in a wheelchair. So if you're wheelchair bound, screw your brain. Why are your hands all over that pipe there? Because I like holding my pipe. <laughs> Getting a little too comfortable with that mic there. Hey, welcome back to our stupid Rex of Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you to everybody who supports us on Patreon. Thank you. you follow us on official Twitter account. Subscribe if you like. It's because it's loose. Like your mom. Oh, wow. Uh, hey, you know what I discovered? Cool. Uh, you know what uh, Sumitra Chatterjee's favorite kind of bread is? What? Rye. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, today we're doing a movie review. Obviously, if you got Rick's joke there. Yep. Uh, and we are doing another Sacha de Rye film. It's true. It's true. Uh, the 1974, one of his later works, uh, Sonar Kela. White boy. How'd you say it? Come on now. Sonu Kilo. Well, aside, uh, no, no, uh, there's no, the, ke, ke, the, uh, the ah sound is, is correct, but whenever there's, it's not just the O sounds, but instead of it being sonar, it, the S-O has a sh sound to it. So it's shonar. Shonar Kolo. There's no ko, it's Shonar Kela. The Golden Fortress. The Megalios. Uh, have <laughs> for, for breakfast. breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> um, it obviously directed and... Yes, written, written from a novel. Uh, from a novel by Sachet Rai, composed by, as he likes to do, yep. uh, Sachet Rai, starring his muse, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> he just, he really loves They love guy. to work together, absolutely. Uh, Sumitra Chatter Sumitra Chatterjee, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And uh, uh, obviously... Uh, quite a few other people, but he's... Yeah, uh, a lot of G's in there. Yeah, uh, Banerjee, uh, a lot of... Chatterjee. Them. Chatterjee's. Yeah, a couple of Banerjee's, a couple uh, of Chatterjee's. Uh, uh, actually, five Chatterjee's. Yeah. No, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. There's a lot of Chatterjee's. It's wonderful. When you're, when, if you're driving or walking around Kolkata, you look and you see uh, you do that a, a, lot? a lot of G's. What's that, G? Yep. Uh, is that your joke or is that somebody else's? You joke? just made that up. No, I didn't. I didn't say at this very moment. Me? What up, G? Yeah. For the jatter? No, that that one's that one's actually that doesn't that's not good enough to be a dad joke or a grandpa joke. <laughs> Compared to what you usually say, mine are glorious mm -hmm. and gold. Hey, literally, everybody hates them. Ah, uh, so obviously this is gonna be a hundred cents. Well, it came out in nineteen seventy four. So if you haven't watched it, please go watch it and come back. Obviously, this will be a hundred cents worth of you. Um. We saw it on Amazon. Yeah, it's on Amazon. And so you can check Well, it. that's not necessarily true. Oh, yeah, it's on... On Amazon through Eros Now. Through Eros Now. And, right. But I also thought I saw it somewhere else. So you might you might be able to find this in a few places. Uh, especially in India, it might be available other places. But, um, Rick, your initial thoughts of... <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, your thoughts of the movie. I really liked it. And you have to have a little caveat to it because it's not your typical... Satyajit Rai film. Mm -hmm, yeah. It's very, you know, I went into it with the thought in my mind, and and Johnny's wonderful because she, Did she, she was, watch it with you? yeah, she was excited that I was going to watch it. She's obviously seen it before, and and um, I went into it with the thought that it's going to be a a mystery thriller. Yeah, it is that it's more mystery. It's actually it's more family mystery. Yeah, so, not really thriller. No, it's more. Um, it feels more like it's. It's not a good example. I'm just talking about the feel of it in terms of story and how accessible it is to all audiences. I went in thinking this might be a dark movie because yeah. we've seen some dark stuff from Saji Jirai, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's more Spy Kids than it is as far as as far as the family accessibility. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird comparison. It's a weird comparison, <laughs> but it does have an accessibility that any age could really I think could really watch. Probably it. a better. Uh... Probably a better example than Spy Kids. Well, it's, it's Spy Kids is a, is a mystery. I don't know if you've watched it recently. It no, but it doesn't it, really hold up. It has mystery, and it's for family. <laughs> so this is more that 
yeah. than it is. It is actually very it just because uh, I enjoyed it as well. Yeah, um, it's not my favorite, but I, I I definitely enjoyed it for sure. Um, it's because like there's so many that I I think are just oh yeah like in terms of like the big city um, the the the. Is it the hero? The I hero really enjoyed as well. I mean, yeah. I enjoyed out almost all of his works. Yeah, the whole um, Opu trilogy, obviously. It's actually probably really hard to rank, you know, his uh, his work because they're all pretty darn solid to great. Yeah, but when you talk um, about, for example, Big City and Hero, those are for me and just you love the, head and shoulders. Obviously, Apu as well. Yeah, those those are those are head and shoulders above in terms of the artistry and the kind of film that you that I refer to as elevative. Not that this wasn't a good film. It's a very good film, and it's a very interesting story. And it's funny, I felt that it also, it's not so much a slow burn as much as it is a glowing ember. Just, it's this nice, slow, consistent, just, yeah, slow burn actually incorporates the flame. Whereas the ember, there's no flames, it's just a nice glow mm. embering. Yeah, yeah. So I like uh, it. Well, I, I did too. Uh, but it, it was actually kind of interesting because uh, it was so different, really, from his Very. normal works. Yeah, he likes obviously. He's a director. He's an artist. He probably wants to, you know, make different kinds of things. Doesn't. Yeah. And obviously, a lot of his work has been very different from every everything else he's done, except for sure. the Pooh trilogy. You know, yeah. One singular story, basically. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it shows his, his range of being able to do different kinds of stories. This one had a lot of quirky characters in it. Yeah. Um, that uh, I enjoyed. Um, and then, obviously, his muse in um, Sumitra yeah. Chatterjee. Who is just always so... I can see why he wants to work with him all the time. He's always so just natural and grounded i i see him having thoughts and it seems like he's listening he's he's just a fun actor to watch work yeah i agree um and he um he, they're like the original like uh leo and scorsese yeah <laughs> it's, they just always Love wanted to work, to work together, together. Yep. Or, or johnny and, and or de niro and Tim scorsese oh, in de niro years. scorsese yeah um but yeah he he definitely had he has a great presence on mm -hmm. the screen and you always could tell that he was probably the most intelligent one in the entire room. Oh yeah. Uh, the so he he gave off that vibe mm -hmm. uh, as the character, um, and you could like I said he he wasn't like indicating or anything. You you could always tell he was he was processing yep. what was being told yep. in the uh, moment to him. And so he's he's a very good actor. So mm -hmm. it's it's no shock that he wants to. Do. I thought he did a very good job in this. Uh, his character was quite interesting, um, and the whole concept itself is. Because it's a uh, it's very um, Indian Hindu mm -hmm. concept of absolutely this kid is acting strangely and now okay so he's reincarnated from a, another life and so and then obviously people find out oh, there might be some treasure involved and right so there's there's different it's it's very intriguing the story is because it's not a story that really is kind of it happens here if you're a different person you're like a Freaky Friday you switch with right whoever right uh, you don't really have this. Um, reincarnation element usually in western stories too typically much. not no and you do a lot in indian yeah uh, in indian cinema but i thought it was a is a unique especially for 1974 uh 74 is that when it came out yeah yeah uh, 1974 when it came out i thought like the um the concept of they it just started off he's waking up in the middle of the night he thinks he's somebody else drawn pictures uh drawn pictures and i was like okay that's i'm i'm intrigued at that Right. concept right there right and so it drawed you in immediately and then and i guess the slow ember after that um it, it was definitely a slower paced film very um, yeah uh at times uh with and it smart wonderful don't know the intentionality but the 90 minute runtime helps helps the it doesn't drag because yeah. it just it everything is pretty concise it's not 90 minutes yeah it's two hours. Oh, sorry. It felt like 90 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah it, was, it really did. It felt like 90 minutes. Uh, but I think that's a wry staple. I can't say any of his films are fast-paced films. Not at all. Like, he, that's, no. that's his specialty. You expect that. You expect going into that. He's going to, yeah, you're going to just sit and be mm -hmm. in, in, in a lot of respects. It was, and a lot of the other uh, supporting characters were really, and I thought the kid did very good. He didn't, he wasn't the one they, they kind of leaned on, um, 
uh, for like the performance or anything. No. Um, but like the other characters, like the uh, mm -hmm. the the author, and then obviously the two goons. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, there was a lot of just interesting dynamics going on. I thought they all did very good. I. I I liked how weird he was. Like, I his did. introduction was funny to me. Yeah, I did. I, I agree. <laughs> like, when he was introduced on the train, and he was just, like, really full of himself, and wants to talk about himself. And boy, was Fuhuda who, Chatterjee. Is he's that who plays so, him? Yeah. The, no, no, no. Uh, I was going to say Sumitra Chatterjee's character, Faluda, is... Oh, gotcha. is, is uh, there were, <laughs> I thought to myself... You're a patient man. Yeah. <laughs> you're really, you're just sitting there minding your own business, and this guy's just not stopping, and then just invites himself to join you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very Indian, though. Very Indian. Yes, very. Um, but yeah, was, I, that whole scene was quite funny, because he was just he was just going on and on and on. Yes. And I was like, I would not, I would leave. <laughs> In this scenario, I am not as kind. I, one of the things I also appreciated was the it, it so a couple staples for Sachi Jit Rai. The first one is man, it just it's so Bengali. He wants to show you the cigarettes. He loves cigarettes so much. Oh yeah. Like most Bengali men and women. Uh but back in the day you see that constantly with the guys smoking their cigarettes and there's the ashtrays and it's that. And and then the other staple is how much he knows about the world. So the whole understanding the differentiation between how a camel gets their water, that there are no wolves in Africa, those kinds of things were not not just intriguing on an adult level, but I think they would be pretty wonderful for a kid. If you're watching this with a little one who's able to understand it uh, just language wise and everything, be able to say, is that true? And, you know, ask mom and dad, are there wolves in Africa? I mm -hmm. thought that was great. Yeah. Uh, what did you what did you come away with the uh, thinking of the overall like messaging messaging of the film was uh i felt like the messaging was subtle compared to yeah. a lot of sachi Jirai's films that typically have a very important message in them i felt like the message in this was while it was uh still an important message i didn't think it was as strong a message the primary thing being uh a a very subtle wink at the uh dead end of materialism the dead end of pure capitalism which is represented in the guys wanting to kidnap the kid because it's a golden temple versus the motives that are more pure from the doctor and the detective and the dad mm -hmm. yeah. of just wanting to find out and not making any judgments which i think is another staple of satyajit rai he has this really great tendency to 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 tell you things that have objective reality and truth in them that are universal and non-negotiable and then also remain open and teachable and i felt like th that was the main takeaway for me was that juxtaposition of well, the goons being yeah. the materialistic capitalistic dimwits yeah and the other ones were the more enlightened more intelligent more accepting and caring people yeah and Obviously, like I said, this is a very Indian story with the reincarnation, or mm -hmm. whether it, I don't know if it's actually reincarnation, but kind I, of. I think he left it, yeah, pretty open to yeah. whether or not it was or it wasn't. Because, like, obviously, in the end, you're like, oh, is there is there a bunch of treasure? Is there, like, is it is this? They just uh, this person who was <clears throat> in this little boy kind of just wanted to see the fortress again mm -hmm. and have that part of a story end right and it was like such a simple thing obviously for, for indians obviously with the whether if it's something other than reincarnation because obviously it's not fully reincarnation because this is obviously somebody from if, whether it's him from a past life or somebody else in him from a past life i don't know uh but uh, reincarnation from what i understand is more of your past life and now you're correct somebody else either way he knew stuff that he couldn't know yeah and the the other the thing that i found an actual powerful messaging is and i don't know how intentional it was in the book those of you who know his writings and what he said about the story his uh he was far more heartbroken at seeing the crumbled remains of an artifact that's in, that's of high value than the goons were of finding out there was no treasure again that was that comparative of this boy is just wanting to be connected to the roots of his past. 
yeah. which how many people want to be connected to the true roots and then how many people are there that want to capitalize and only see the monetary value of those things. And for him, I thought that was a really wonderful moment. It gave him the closure, I guess, because yeah. it ends with him saying, I, I'm ready to go back to Kolkata, which man, I'm not just ready to go back to Kolkata. I'm, I don't need to draw my pictures anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so that was, like it's like I said, it's a very Indian or Hindu um, story that I feel like a lot of them can really connect to um, with that uh, element. Because if you have like a reincarnation story here, a lot not, unless you're obviously Hindu, right? Uh, you probably don't connect too much with reincarnation stories. Yeah, because it's not. It's not a. It's not not a common. We, obviously, we know about it just because Hinduism is a very popular religion uh, in the world, and uh, with the everybody, I think knows the concept of reincarnation, but it's not really a part of everyone's daily life. Most people don't believe that, at least in uh, America. Mm -hmm. Here, obviously, because your primary religions are uh, Christianity and um, what was the other one? Well, Christianity, Judaism, Judaism Islam, Islam. Yeah, uh, Islam doesn't. No, doesn't do incarnation. My, my right? understanding, I, I do not be believe that Islam has reincarnation okay. as part of their belief system. Uh, let, let me know if that's wrong. Obviously, but yeah, I, I, I enjoyed the concert because it was just so it was so different. Um, and and on such a rise score, which I thought was actually more subtle than a, a lot of his, it didn't have. There, I mean, there wasn't didn't, much score. Yeah, there wasn't a lot, uh, and it didn't have like the. It wasn't a village, so maybe that's. Like his signature, like flute kind of mm -hmm. kind of thing that I love so much that it's like very such it rai. Yeah, um, and the, and a lot of things cinematography wise that you take for granted nowadays. But even something that seems as simple as the shot when they're going up to the fort and he pushes the doctor off the edge, mm -hmm. that was a steep incline that they had to stabilize the camera for, and that was not they're 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 you know. Those were big, heavy-duty things you had to hold and mm -hmm. steady and shots in the car and shots on the camels. Those weren't yeah. easy shots to do back in the day. No, definitely not. And I also really liked another message. The boy and the detective, um, there was really only two places that mattered to them. Kolkata and the Golden Palace. Yeah, the Golden Palace. And for everybody else... We didn't really know much about their origin or any sense that they had a home. So that was the other takeaway is that the people who were the uh, <clears throat> protagonists, as it were, what mattered to them was home. Yeah, Home was important. Home in Kolkata, home in India. That's, that's the symbolism, obviously, and the way that the peacock is treated at the end by the criminal versus the boy who's always treasured the peacock. That, too, is messaging, I think, as well to people who would be Indian and recognize that there are two different kinds of people, people who are lovers of their motherland and want to preserve everything that matters and those who just don't care and want to make money off it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, um, I, as I do almost all. I don't, I don't I'm not even sure if there's a film that I didn't like. There was – there's only been one for me uh, that just – I, it didn't really – I didn't dislike it as much as it just didn't do much for me. I forgot the name of it. It's the one with the, the woman yeah. in Kolkata. Um, weird. A lot and her husband. Rank, a lot of people rank that one. As yeah, one of their I know. I just That's just the way it, it's, I, I it fell a, for me. I have a little top ten list here uh, See, because obviously I want to know which one we should first watch it. Right. Obviously, we'll get to other Bengali and films. There, that's the stuff. music room. The music room. I love the music room. Uh, I, I, I really enjoyed that one. Uh, Apu, that's one of the other yeah. ones, right? Um, that's the one you didn't like. Yeah, the, the lonely. lonely yeah, the music. The music room was was. Uh, wasn't that the? That's the one with the the old man. Um, right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the hero. The hero. Seven. Love the hero. The goddess. I don't believe we've not Debbie? seen Debbie. Debbie we have not seen that. Uh, the stranger. The stranger. Oh, yeah. The stranger. That's great. a great one. Uh, that one's so good. The big, uh, city. big city. That's. I love that. that and then be, uh, all of the Opu. That might be my number one. Ones. The uh, they have something different at number one. What? Why is it Jimmy? I don't know. Did Jimmy write this? Days and nights in the forest. Oh, we haven't seen that one. Why is? Why? Because all the other ones had all the other ones had a thumbnail that is from a Sachi Rai film. On this article, the number one in this article is a picture of uh, Jimmy and Buddy Meister. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Days and night, or is that Distant Thunder? 
Wait a minute. The story, four friends who leave the big city for a trip to tribal village and they grapple with their responsibilities and the wants that push them away. Mm, I don't think we've seen that. I don't think so either. The, uh, so Days and Nights in the Forest from 1970. I know Sachit Rai, and I think it's one of his first films, and it's not easily available. It has a horror film. <gasps> what is it called? Hold on. Like, I've tried to gimme, find... Gimme, gimme. Mm. Munihara? Is it Munihara? Sachijit Rai's soul horror film. Okay, let's Here. do it. I want it. I don't think I, I've been able to like find it, though. Mm. Anywhere. Is it a full movie? 53 minutes, really? Is that it? <laughs> Not subbed. Um, DVD, maybe? Off Amazon? Is it only 53 minutes? That's crazy. Uh-uh. It's not showing me. Mm. So if anybody knows, or if you've seen it, if it's worth a watch, because obviously Sacha Rai and horror, that'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so please let us know about that. What should be the next Sacha Rai film that we watch? What should be the next non Sacha Rai Bengali, Bengali. film uh, that we should watch, obviously? Um, we've gotten through a lot of his movies. Um, he, I'm sure he still has quite a few that we... Obviously, that number one on that list we mm -hmm. haven't gotten to yet. Correct, um, and obviously this horror one. Um, so please let us know what each of those should be. What did you think of this film, and what should be the next film we watch? Down below. Down below.